fans. Could she get it? Grace has got it now. She's in her own area. Grace has got it. She makes a wicked left turn. Bounces it off the post again. Grace goes down and leaves it on the ground. This could be a steal. Brady Sachs goes down. She's past it. Oh. Okay, the number one just picked up the ball in the end zone. And the she's running across the face of the goal. And the three is kind of on her but the three is drifting a little bit behind and if our one wanted to she could just throw the ball straight continue going straight and throw the ball out straight to her side and get a shot at the goal because the three is so far behind but she misses that opportunity but as the three is behind and hopefully trying to catch up uh, she makes a subsequent turn and uh, should get a shot at the goal and she made a good sharp turn jumped out of it however uh and the number three turned toward her so she should have an easier time getting past her and the only thing that i would have done differently is when i made this turn i wouldn't have made it and swung out away from the three i would have made the turn and then continued uh the turn to I uh, got right up against the three when you're making a right-handed person is making a left turn that's what you want to do you may want to make them tight and 180 degrees or more so you go right up against and connect with the three and here instead of doing that she kind of makes her turn and then drifts away from the three and she drifted off to the right and actually the ball bounces off the post to the right post if she had gone straighter toward the goal maybe she'd have made that but um and yeah she doesn't she falls off when she gets possession of it again in this clip the ball grace carried the ball up the hill grace is the number one she can score but she's gonna have to bounce the ball when she gets up to the 30 bounce and the bounces are wicked but she's got it now on the second bounce. She looks and shoots. Okay, uh, red number one, or the white helmet red number one, his, has the ball, and she's kind of behind all the other players in the middle of the pack and carrying the ball toward her end zone. And as she gets up to the 30-yard line right there she makes her bounce um you got somebody in the way so I won't comment on her bouncing but uh the three is a little behind and well away from her but she doesn't get her bounce the first go around and uh she keeps after it of course the three wasn't really a pressure but she kept herself between the ball and the three um, so even if the three had been right on her she still should have come up with it but then she comes up with it when she comes up with it uh, she's in the corner the three is way off so at any time here she could shoot uh, over the three's head because there's plenty of room and the three was kind of out of position turned toward her go so got further behind and now the number one is facing the goal and going toward the goal and the number three is no longer between her and the goal so she could shoot it from right here or in the next couple of strides and and sure enough, she does shoot it just before the three gets within reach of her and gets her shot at the goal. Now they need to be put some points on the board. It's up. It's in Zach's racket. He doesn't quite get the shot off. Has to make a circle around, and Rachel's in position. He's going to have to get past Rachel. Drives across the face. Takes some wicked wood, but hangs on to the ball, and he turns, and Rachel is right there. No, no. Jack goes over the left side of the field. Oh, he's got her looking. 
Okay, we're watching the black team, and the black number one has just caught the ball in the area. And he's facing the goal. The three's on his nonstick side. And if he would believe that he can just throw the ball when he's got it rather than run up to the D, he could throw it right here. But he misses that opportunity. And then by the time he runs up to D, the three is pushing him over. So he elects not to take that attempt and go away and do something else. So he starts his turn away from the three, and that's appropriate. And uh, here he's going like toward the corner to get try to get space between him and the three, and that's appropriate also. Um, the, the three had actually turned toward him. If he was outside of the D enough, as soon as she started turning toward him, he could have tightened up his turn and gone, but he might have been too close to the D. So here, where he's got some, some uh, space between him and the three, he's crossways to the goal, and the three is also crossways to the goal, but she's completely committed left. So he's got space between him, so his opportunity now is to go to the right of her. She's committed left, completely left, and so he should be able to get past her by going to her right. But he misses that opportunity and elects instead to go up against her with her on his stick side, which I never recommend. If he didn't take that turn to go to the back, instead of trying to go forward and letting her come against the stick, I would say turn completely away to the left, completely away from her. But he takes her on the stick side, and even though she got a swing at his racket, he hangs on to the ball. And now he's kind of out of reach of a racket. He didn't get a shot at the goal going past her like that. Uh, and now he's starting to turn away from her to get his racket out of reach, which is appropriate so here he's starting a turn away from her and that's good and uh, she is in a pretty good position maybe just half a step too far forward uh, but he still is liable to beat her even if she's in a good position on a tight turn to the left like this. However, his tight turn to the left to head to the goal, since he turned his horse on the front end, actually moved his horse farther away from the goal. However, right at this point, he's still in a good position. If he would just be able to get his horse moving forward, she is face completely left. He is already face completely right so he should be able to get past her just running forward and going past her on the right but instead of jumping out after he kind of finally made that turn and jumping out the direction he was going he just kind of pulls up and hesitates uh, and doesn't move either direction. So uh, now she's not completely committed to the left anymore, and so he wouldn't be as I mean, wouldn't be as reliable to get past her going to the right. Uh, but he does still have room to turn toward her, so he could still make her commit one way and then go another and here when she's facing mostly left 
he doesn't go to the other way. He goes, starts turning to go past her on the left. So he is at, he has actually put her in the correct position to block him to make that left turn that he's fixing to make. And now she's committed completely left. There's room between them, so he could turn toward her and go to her right. But he elects to turn away from her, and that is still safe. Just missed an opportunity to get a shot at the goal. But turning away from her is always correct and and safe. So he's moving away, gets a little bit of space again. Now, right there, he's crossways to the goal, and she is also crossways to the goal. She's committed completely right, and there's room between him where he has an opportunity to get past her by just checking back and going past her on her left. But he misses that opportunity at first. Then here he kind of starts to turn left away from her and has gotten her committed all the way to the left. And now it's her weak spot is for him to go forward and around her on the right. And there he does. Gets around her while she's facing left she goes he goes around to her right and he does get in front of her and once again wants to run, run right up to the d before he throws it but he gets the shot off and makes the goal he it over fast and hard to Zach's racket. Zach. so here the black two just pass it to the black one so the black one has it has just caught it in the end zone right up by the 30-yard line, right in the middle of the field, and the th facing the goal, and the three is nowhere around. So there's no problem with him just going straight in and shooting directly at the goal, and of course running right up to the D before he throws it. Into their own end zone. Throws it up to the side, gets a pretty good bounce. Now he'll have to get past Rachel with 24 seconds left to play. 22. You're fine, you're fine. Rachel takes a swing. Zach turns. Rachel oh. takes another swing. He's still hanging on to the ball, though. 14, 13 seconds. Still plenty of time. And okay, so the one's taking a penalty throw into his own area from the 30 yard line. And I don't really talk about penalty throws. Uh, on this series of videos but he is taking it very correctly he's taking it on the side away from the defender and still on his stick side and he's throwing it up nice and high where it should come back up nice and high for a big bounce so sure enough it bounces up well, for him, he had drifted a little bit toward the defender, and then as it bounced up, turned toward the ball, which is all very correct. Now he's got the ball in the area, and right at this instant, the three is a little bit behind. If he would just turn left, get, get up against her, he would be connecting way forward of her and could probably just point to the goal and shoot. Uh but he doesn't take that opportunity. And as he, he may be trying to do that now, and um, trying to do it now is not as strong as it was back when he would have had to turn her less and was more forward of her. Uh, but it's actually still very possible he's connecting uh well forward of her and so should easily be able to turn her toward the goal where he can get a shot at the goal 
but he's not positioning his horse correctly for the turn uh, so the horse cannot push very effectively he's got the horse's head turned to the left and his body is actually the horse's body is actually going away from the horse he's trying to push rather than pushing up into the horse so he's not being um, he's not being effective at bending that other horse so he can get a shot at the goal this time and so he gives up on that and starts to turn away and that is very appropriate so here the instant that number three starts to turn toward him if he would tighten up his turn and go he could he could get past her um, you still since he's right hand and is turning right would want to only turn 120 degrees whether she's turning toward you or away from you to to make your first jump uh, away from where she might be able to get to your racket um, he actually doesn't go quite 120 more more like 90 degrees and then doesn't jump anywhere he turns 90 degrees and just stops and so now she's gotten up against him almost on his stick side which is a situ because he didn't jump away uh, even if he didn't try to get past her he should have been jumping away uh, just to get away from her so he has to deal with her on his stick side take some wood and is able to hang on to the ball and now has her committed completely left where if he would turn around he might be able to get past her on the right and making the turn right when she was lunging forward to swing at his racket is a very good time to make that turn so once again as he makes that turn instead of moving very far away over to her right his horse hopped his back end the direction he didn't want to go again so he's about four feet closer to her to her than he would have been if his horse had turned correctly and uh he still may get get be able to get by but it won't be nearly as easily to get by since his horse put him more directly behind her rather than off to the side so he doesn't decide to continue to the right however and he starts making his move to go past her on the left however what he didn't do even if he wasn't going to go by her on the right he should have made her commit completely to the right before he started his turn to go past her on the left and since he didn't get her committed to the right before he went by her on the left she was in a position to get up there and threaten and get within reach of his racket and I would have never recommended that he let his racket get within reach of any defender but he's able to hang on to the ball <clears throat> and now is getting a little bit of space between him and the three so he can plan another maneuver once again the instant he sees her starting to turn toward him he if he would tighten up his turn he would beat her and get past but he misses that opportunity and now that he's crossways to the goal and she's still facing away from the goal now he should also be able to get past her and here he should be able to get past her going forward and around 
to the right side of her or checking back and going to the left side of her. You should be able to get, if you're in this position with room to turn toward her, you should be able to get past her going either way. And he elects to go on her left, which puts his stick within range of her. Um, and he should have been able to get past, but I wouldn't have recommended that he does it in a way that gets his stick in reach of her racket. But he avoids getting the racket hit out of her, gets in pe gets does get past her, and does get a look and a shot at the goal. Okay, there's a throw in. I think it landed in Grace's racket. She turns around. She's in her own end zone. All she has to do is put it between the posts. She makes a spin. Pulls it a little behind. Okay. That's the red number one that just snagged it in a lineup in the in, in the end zone between the two players. And um, she turns away from the player and heads across towards the middle of the end zone. And the number three is pretty far off. So she has um, some options of what to do. Uh, she likes to keep keep coming across and the as she comes across the number three was getting in a pretty good position was getting fairly close to her had gotten within oh so he's only three or four feet away and um our number one starts to turn as soon as the number one sees that the number three has started to turn toward her if the number one will just tighten up her turn, she should be able to beat the number three on the turn. And sure enough, is a pretty good example of the anybody that turns toward a player is going to get behind. And uh, the number one really didn't tighten up her turn anymore. She started making a little bit of a gradual turn. wasn't really a stop and turn turn tight. And then once she saw the three hidden, you know, start to make the turn, she didn't really tighten it up and quicken it up to go. She just continued in her little circle. Um, but she does beat her on the turn and gets a shot at the goal. One thing I would have suggested is that she shot as soon as she faced the goal rather than waiting those few strides, which gave the three almost enough time to get up there to interfere. He's going to try for a connection. What a wonderful connection. Oh, and then she's bobbled and it's come loose. She may get it again. Grace is going down. She's, and she's headed for the goal. Okay, here the number one <clears throat> has it in midfield and making her way to the end zone. And she missed her bounce. Um, and here she makes a bit of a mistake. After you miss a ball and you want to turn back to it, uh, you should turn, always turn away. And here she's turning toward the ball and the opposing player. But as it turns out, the three had missed it, so the one's going to get another chance at it and so here she's got it uh, securely in her racket again and she's turned to start to head toward the goal and she is in front of the number three a bit so all she has to do is get rid of it and shoot the goal before the three uh, is able to catch up and the three's a little bit slow about getting her horse up, so she's, the number one stays in front, right up to the up to the D, and gets the shot off. Number one, take McKinley, throws it out, throws it out there. Pretty far, but he's got it. He's got some help if he wants it. Let's see if he wants help. Zach 
Jack carries the ball down the field amongst a bunch of orange shirts coming up to the 30 and bounces flat. I don't see any way that he can get this back. And they just go. Okay. <clears throat> Here the number one is taking a uh, penalty throw back up in midfield and the number one's job in the end zone starts as soon as he gets possession even if it's in midfield and so he's got possession from his own uh, penalty throw right here so he turns toward his goal he connects or one player connects with him and he's actually a little bit forward of that player so he could have controlled them and actually they turn away then he comes up on another player still on the non-stick side and he's getting close to the sideline a player on his non-stick side so he starts to turn away and that is all correct and of course we all remember he's right-handed and he's turning right away from a player so he only wants to turn 120 degrees and jump out so there he's turned 120 degrees and he didn't jump out um, which would have kept him away from the other player and got him headed to the middle of the field where he could have some maneuvering room. Perhaps he saw that the player against him was turning toward him, so he decided to turn, tighten up and turn away, turn left, make a tight turn to the left, um, which would be a very appropriate thing to do. The number or whatever number that is, I think it might be the number three, is already committed to his right side. And if he would just turn left, he would be in the way of her turning to get him. And he'd get his racket away from her racket. He would be getting his, his racket away from her racket. But he doesn't turn left or jump out late. He just stops, lets her get right up against him, and this is the position I would never recommend you be, you get in. Um, and then <clears throat> he turns toward her to get out of that position. I'm thinking he probably didn't have four feet between his horse and her horse when he turned. She may be making a back swing from in front of his shoulder. Um, but none of those things get called, and he does get at least past her for now. So now his racket is fairly safe, and he comes up into... another kind of precarious position the three is behind him just slightly on the left and then there's a player in front of him also on the left so if he would run to the right of that player in front of him that player is forward of him and could control him he's very close to the sideline they could easily block him or get him in the sideline uh, if he turns left, he would probably be crossing the three that's behind him. The thing to do to get out of this position would be to check back, let that three catch up with him, and then bend her towards the middle of the field and then go to the left of the Palomino horse. But he elects to just... turn in front of the three that's behind him I think without sufficient clearance and probably without sufficient clearance to with the Palomino horse in the front and then when he does that um, aside from the crossings uh, he Right here, he is within reach of the Palomino horse's racket. And so if he was going to do that to get past that 
Palomino horse, he should have swung further to the left and gotten made his run down the field, but outside the reach of the player on the Palomino horse. But he gets past that player. Now he's making his way up to the end zone, and the three is a little bit behind, and he makes his bounce over the line. Uh, I would recommend when you're in this position as one, if the three is anywhere near you and on the right side, that you don't take the bounce on your right side. Um, but he, if if it came up well and everything worked out all right, he's in front enough that it should should still be okay. But it doesn't leave room for options if it doesn't come up well or if you miss it for some reason. So here the ball just stays flat, doesn't come up at all. And then he saw that right away that it didn't come up for him. But he continued on after the ball rather than... Uh, once it come at, came out of his racket on the bounce, it became a loose ball, and he should handle it as a loose ball situation. He's first in line for it. He should be going all out to make sure that the three does not get to the ball. So once he saw it bouncing flat and headed at the back line, he should have checked back, gotten up against the three, and been pushing her on, off, pushing her off all the way up to wherever the ball lands it ended up going out the back and there was no getting it on either for either person though here this do better this time right in his racket he can't quite get the shot off and rachel is giving him all kind of trouble in the end zone look at the pressure she's putting on him he turns away but it's too too sharp of an angle. In fact, he's going out the back. He has to throw it back into midfield to Braxton. Braxton's got it. Puts it into Zach's racket. 21 seconds. Still plenty of time. And they got one. Okay, so the number one has just caught it in the end zone, right in the middle. And the number three is on his nonstick side. And it looks like he's pointing close enough to the goal that if he would have been ready to throw it as soon as he caught it he could have just thrown it from here <clears throat> but evidently he he wasn't ready and he get ends up going into the d so he decides not to throw it but come back and make some other maneuver so he starts to turn away from her and that's good if he had seen that she was turning toward him um he could have tightened up his turn and gone. Since he was turning right, he would have wanted, and if he's making a tight turn, he would have wanted to turn 120 degrees and jumped out. But he actually what well, didn't turn out not even making a tight turn, but just started making a gradual turn. And then she has switched sides and is coming up on his stick side. So he needs to turn away right now, maybe even before, before she gets within reach of his racket. And he doesn't turn away, and he just hangs out with her on his stick side, which I never recommend that you do. But finally, he's held onto the ball this long, and finally he starts his turn away. Now he's turning left, so he would want to turn at least 180 degrees, If he, and he does seem to be making a tight turn. He's right pretty close to the sideline. Uh, so he would be wanting to turn at least 180 degrees and try to come back up against her. So he does actually make a turn of more than 180 degrees, and that's good. And... He jumps out, 
right this instant he's kind of even up with her but uh he can sh she she is definitely not in control of him and he can definitely at least get further into the field further away from that sideline where if he needs to maneuver again he'll have more more space to maneuver again and he's pointed almost to the goal and kind of even with her and really has a chance of bending her toward the goal and just running straight um, to the goal so he's actually gotten ahead and he should be able he's he was well ahead and shouldn't have had any problem controlling her and bending her to uh, keep from her pushing him over, but actually bending her more toward the goal where he could just run straight in. But you can see he's not have doesn't have his horse in the correct position to be pushing. He has his horse's head turned in, and that's pushing the body's horse away from the number three, making her job a whole lot easier. She doesn't have to do the pushing because he's pushing his horse away from her by pulling his head toward that horse uh so anyhow he he ends up even though he's forward of her he ends up being controlled by her because he didn't get in a good pushing position and she pushes him pretty much to the back line he decides he has to throw it back in of course where he came back in was more than 10 yards from where he went out so they shouldn't have allowed him to do that but um his number three gets a pass back to him in the end zone. So now our number one has it again. This time he's caught it, and he's between the three and the goal. I can't tell where he is in relation to the D, where if he was outside the D, he could just, you know, turn and shoot. But he may be uh, too close to the D to do that. And as he <clears throat> here is, is getting outside the D he starts to turn toward her um, right this instant he probably has room to turn toward her but she is moving and if she had continued moving forward and he turn and she, and he turned toward her she would have him blocked um, so in, even in this position he would it would be safer for him to turn away where she couldn't have him blocked if he would turn to face the goal. And you can see his his horse making a turn this time where his back feet were close to the D and needed to he needed to get you know out of the D. His horse turning on the front end actually helped him get farther away from the D. <laughs> Um, so he was able to turn, um, and he had plenty of room since his horse turned on the front. It actually moved his horse away from the three that was coming up, and when he turned toward her, he had, there was plenty of room for him to turn toward her, and then he could just look at the goal and shoot it. Okay, the red team with the blue number one. Um, the blue number one has just picked up the ball, and we're looking at his job in the end zone. And his job in the end zone begins as soon as he gets possession, even if he's not in the end zone yet. So he just got possession in midfield. And as he's running downfield, he, you know, I think it's the number one, I guess, got up against him and slowed him down a little bit and pushed him over a little bit uh, away from the middle of the field. But the number three is still a couple of strides behind and way over right in the middle of the field. So... Um, once he's in uh he shouldn't have problem 
getting a shot at the goal because the three is behind and so far away from him. So he turns to look at the goal, and he could have thrown it about two strides before he actually threw it, uh, but he waited till he got almost up to the D to throw it and almost gave the number three time to get between him and his throw at the goal. But she didn't quite get it, and he makes this one. And they do a little trick play. Robbie's got the ball. No, 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 no. Robbie bounces. Scott has it. Mitchell putting a lot of pressure on Robbie. Looking for that. Robbie's fight to get that goal. Shoot. Okay. Um. That's the blue number one that came back into the middle of the field. Um, and the red number three, his red number three, just passed him the ball. So he's just now got it in midfield, and he's wanting to go to the right side of the screen. So we're concerned about him working in the end zone. Of course, his job starts as soon as he gets the ball out here. And he's just getting past the other defenders. And the number three is in front of him, pretty much in the middle of the field, well in front of him, and he's pretty much in the middle of the field. So right here, he has a choice of going in and taking the three on his stick side or his non-stick or his non-stick side. He elects to go to the left, taking her on his stick side. And as he goes in, makes his bounce across the line, she's still a pretty good ways away, but I, since she was on his right, I would have still uh, suggested that he throw it off to his left and pick it up away from the defender, even though she was, even if she is uh, a good distance away. In case the ball didn't come up, just right or he wasn't able to get it right away she would have had time to do something but uh, if you put it off to your other side if the ball does something unusual you're still protecting her from it and can still go get it but the ball comes up for him nicely and he's got it and he wasn't able to go just run on in and the three's coming up so he starts his turn away from her which is very appropriate and he did turn away before he got within reach of her racket but right here the instant he sees that she is turning toward him he has the option of just turning hard right and getting past her and make the goal as soon as the number three starts turning toward you if you just tighten up your turn and go, you will get by them. They will definitely get behind every time they turn toward you. But he elects not to take that opportunity. Has her on his non-stick side here. And now she has gotten much more away from between him and the goal. Not only is she uh, facing away from the goal, but she is. she's put herself, or she's put the ball carrier between her and the goal so a right turn here would be a for sure easy shot at the goal but he elects not to turn right there um, and now she has gotten turned around where if he would make a right turn now uh, she would just have to ride forward to stop him where he would actually have to make a 180 degree turn so he missed that opportunity to make the right turn and she's gotten back into a position to protect him from that uh, so moving keeping her on his, his non-stick side and moving toward her rear end should be safe and give him a chance to move around some more and do some more maneuvering so he he goes to get away from her and he had another opportunity, um, like right now, that he is 
has gotten turned more than crossways to the goal. Um, and she is still facing up to him. Uh, the guideline for threes is if you're going to go toward the number one to close the gap, by the time the number one is crossways to the goal, you must be at least crossways to the goal. Um, so as a number one, when you see that you are crossways to the goal and they're still facing away from the goal, you know you have a an opportunity to get past them. And so here... Uh, she is facing completely left, and he has room between her and him that he can turn toward him, so he should be able to get past her by going past her on her left. And it looks like that's what he started to do, but he didn't actually get any left of her. What happened, instead of when he turned left, his horse's back feet staying there, and the front feet coming around and getting him well to the left of her. His horse's horse planted the front feet, which were kind of right behind her, and jumped his back end around kind of in line with her also. So he um, had a good idea there to make a turn and get by her on the left, but the horse didn't turn... Uh, correctly and didn't get a good clear opening on her left so here he, he gives up going by the left and goes by the, goes over to the right the only thing here he didn't make her commit all the way to the left so he's less likely to beat her by going to the other side because she's not all the way committed to the left when he starts to go past her on the right so he's still got her on the non-stick side so everything's safe and here, she's getting a little bit behind. In fact, if he was this much forward of her and still on the left side of the, uh, of, the end so of the end zone, he should be able to just connect with her and bend her toward the goal and get a shot at the goal. But um, he doesn't take advantage of that opportunity. And as he comes across to face the goal, he turns away, which is appropriate. Uh, since she was behind already, she is um, in a better position to beat him on a turn because he's she's already farther back the direction that he's going to be heading. But right here as he starts this turn and he sees her starting to turn toward him if he would just sit down and turn left uh, he could make the goal that way um, so here she's facing all the way to the left still another opportunity even now he could make a hard left turn and get a shot at the goal um, and here he decides to turn toward starts to turn toward her she's coming up on his stick side he turned toward her enough that she has access to his is within reach of his stick now and it looks like he's trying to continue turning toward her and I don't think there is room to legally turn toward her at this point. And sure enough, he, he, he does turn toward her and makes her, of course, I, I don't think his turn, I think he actually went over the back. I don't think his turn was legal. But the idea of that, of getting her to commit to the right and then going back to the left, she is still turning right and he's already turning back to the left at this point so he's going to get her committed almost all the way to the right and then he's going to go try to pass her up on the left there she got committed almost all the way to the right and there he goes off to the left just like he's supposed to so those last two little little moves 
were just like I recommend you do to position the number three in a position on the field where they're not between you and the goal. Um, he just should have done it from five feet away from her rather than right on top or right behind her. And as she's still coming around, uh, he has a an open shot at the goal right here. And if he would take it right now when he first made that turn and jump, there would be no problem uh, with her not being able to catch up and get in the way. But he waits a little bit before he throws it. And... He, he had it well over her head where um, I don't think there was any danger of her, her actually getting it. But the longer you wait, the more time you give them to get between you and the, uh, and the pass to the goal. And he makes that no problem. Okay, we were talking about the number one uh, with the ball in the area, and the number one just picked the ball up in midfield. His job in the area starts as soon as he gets the ball, and he's got it now in midfield. He's wanting to score to the right of the screen. So there he is, kind of meets up with the number three, and here he's let the three get forward of him. And the three has the potential of taking control of him, maybe even bending him where he can't get down the field, but at least slowing him down. And there is an opposing three coming up on his stick side. So I would think his best move would be just before that number three who's on the Palomino horse gets within reach of his racket, he tosses it right back here to one of these two red players that are riding back there just hoping he'll throw it to them. Um, but he doesn't do it before the three gets there, and the three actually does get within reach of his racket and does get a swing at it, but our ball carrier hangs on to it. Um, he does... The three passes him up. He does get by, and I mean the two. I guess it was the. I guess that was the number one on the Palomino horse. Passed him up, but the number three also passed him up, and the number three is committed all the way to the right. So our ball carrier does a good thing, and starts to go by the number three on the left. Then. He's got the number three committed all the way to the left, and he turns and goes all the way to the right. And these two turns have been plenty far away where they are very legal turns and not a problem. Um, but he got her committed all the way to the left and then turned toward her and then starts to go by her on the right. Then as he gets up to the line, of course the orange player on the Palomino horse shouldn't have been allowed to swing at his racket, try to get the ball, try to interfere with the bounce, try to do anything while his uh, horse's feet are in the 30-yard area. But um, he does do something uh, to try to interfere with that bounce while the number three has our one held where they can't get away from that player. But our uh, the number three was on the ball carrier's left, so he takes the bounce to the right. So if it doesn't come up right, and if something happens where he doesn't get it right off, 
he should still be able to protect, keep the three off of it, and come back and get the ball. And here, he the ball's still on the ground, and if he would just check up, keeping that number three on his left side, he could go pick up the ball casually. But he doesn't check up, actually passes up the number three, so now he actually put the number three between him and the ball. And since the ball is loose now, it it uh, is apparent that the number three is going to be getting to it first, and it's on the other side of the number three from our one. So all he can do is go all out to try to keep her from picking it up, which means getting right up against her and just pushing her over, hoping that that will cause her to miss. And he does get up against her here and is actually pushing. Uh, so he is doing, once he got out of position, he's really doing all he can at this point to try to salvage the the situation. And as it turns out, she misses it. Maybe it was because he was right up against her. But... Regardless of that, the ball is still loose. It's still on the other side of the number three from our number one, so he should still be going all out to try to keep her from picking it up, which means he should be right up against her, pushing her uh, to try to keep her from picking the ball up. But after he pushed, it off, pushed her off of it that first time, she missed it the first time, he really never made contact with her again. And uh, she's picking it up very close to her horse. If he were pushing her at all, if he had been pushing her at all right after she missed it the first time, her horse would have been on top of the ball where she'd have been much less likely to pick it up. But here it looks like he's actually trying to give up pushing on her and trying to keep her from picking up the ball, but trying to change sides and go for the miss expecting her to miss it, and then he'll be over there where the ball is to pick it up. Well, um, he doesn't continue on to that side, and she misses it again for some reason, but it wasn't because our number one was pushing on her. Uh, but she did miss it and pass it up, and now it's kind of on the ground between the two players. But being on the ground, our number one's job is to be going all out to keep the number three from picking it up. So what he should be doing is pushing up against her, even though the ball is there, maybe even on his stick side, push up against her to make sure she doesn't have a reach at it, and then he can get it casually. Uh, and here, it's kind of near the white horse's back feet, back left foot near it. And if our number one were pushing up against her, it would be very easy for him to pick it up on his offside. It would be a very easy thing to do. Uh, but now it's in a position where both of them have to turn back for the ball. And any time you have to turn back for the ball, you want to turn away from the opposing player. Um because if you turn toward them, their horse is liable to be blocking you from getting back to the ball. But he doesn't turn away to go back after the ball. He starts turning toward the opposing player, and she starts turning toward him. Luckily, uh both the horses are turning partially on the front end so they don't block each other as much as they normally would um, but the ball ends up being once again against or on the other side of the number three from our one and being on the ground what he should be doing is trying to push up against her to try to keep her from picking it up. But he's really not 
trying to push against her. You can tell he's he's not positioning his horse to push at all. As he's pulling his horse's head toward her, his horse's body is actually going away from her, and really there's no contact with her pushing at all. And as he turns, of course, his horse more to her, his horse's head more to her, his horse's body gets farther away, and she ends up picking up the ball and getting final possession of it.